thanks Rado for the nice introduction. You, you do make, make me look a little bit old with uh, <coughs> 20 years of uh, web experience. You're <laughs> not old. So, well, welcome everybody. Uh, I'm happy that you uh, joined my talk. And I wonder how uh, you're all doing. How has word come so far? Okay. Yes. <laughs> So uh, now I do believe that uh, today you already uh, gained a lot of information. Uh, already uh, quite a few talks have been uh, done. So, but uh, let's get uh, into my talk about web performance. <coughs> my name is Mike Reinhardt. I love to make the web faster and more useful for everybody. I live and breathe the web for as long as I can remember started WordPress uh, yeah, since version 1, so I immediately mean, saw that the flexibility and the potential of uh, the platform was uh, really nice to build websites for businesses and blogs and so on. This is our plan. I will talk about three areas on how to speed up your website, so let's get started. If we look today, there are more than 4 billion people connected to the internet today. And that gives us quite a lot of power. And if I look at the... Uh, what? <coughs> As a web developer, that gives us uh, yeah, an enormous reach to reach people via, via our website. Last month I uh, was in uh, Tokyo and yeah, that really also gave me uh, a good impression of how many people there are yeah, connected to the internet today. This location over here is the Shibuya crossing and I was visiting Tokyo for WordCamp. At this crossing we have, well there are like, it's an intersection, I don't know if you know uh, this fact that it's uh, one of the most busiest crossing in the world. So and at one time, uh, when the light turns uh, green for uh, the pedestrians, people start walking and there are over 2,000 people crossing the street at the same time. <coughs> well, Tokyo is very a very different culture, but yeah, they have one thing in common, and that is they are really mobile-minded, and they have a, a mobile-first mindset. And at these days, we do everything with our mobile, we do shop, we book uh, trips, and we search the web. And it's really important that our website loads fast, because people expect that our website loads within one or two seconds. According to research, 53% of your mobile site visitors will leave your site if it takes longer than 3 seconds to load. And that means that yeah, you could lose half of your customers before they even see your site. If you look at the statistics, and nowadays you know, more and more visitors visit your website through mobile device. And this was in 2016. But nowadays it uh, has grown even uh, much, much more. Well, all this data isn't lost on Google. Uh, they, uh, they announced uh, last July that they will use uh, page speed as a ranking factor on, on the mobile searches. So knowing all of this, uh, that uh, web performance is important, and yeah, that it uh, is also a ranking factor in Google. Uh, we should probably all rank on top of uh, the Google searches. But, Houston, we have a problem. <coughs> As we yeah. continually push our websites to do more and more, yeah, to push more codes and more features into our website, uh, we are running into performance issues. It takes an average on 15.3 seconds to load a mobile web page. Well, considering that people leave your site if it takes longer than three seconds to load, 
Then in that's yeah, far too far too slow. According to research, uh, Google found that 53% uh, of our website is over two megabytes. And the majority of that is JavaScript and images. So the internet is get, getting heavier and heavier. And our devices might get faster, but if you look at the web itself, yeah, it just it just becomes uh, slower. Our web pages have grown so big that today uh, a web page is at the same size as, as the classic video game Doom. And they have become too slow with so many elements and yeah, they became just slow loading pages. So if you consider that uh, the first person shooter uh, Doom is a a 3D shooter with you know, multiple levels, sound effects, and today we are you know, still struggling to <coughs> deliver a piece of web content in roughly the same size. So that's quite interesting. And all this weight is causing our websites to slow down and affecting the user experience. And if you look at the, the user, they don't measure our website you know, with speed, but they don't measure it with their brain and their eyes. <coughs> and Google also knows this as well. They pay very much a close, a close attention to the, to the user experience. And they want to make sure that when people visit your website, that people can find answers to their questions as soon as possible. Google made a discovery some years ago, it's around 2006. Uh, Marissa Meyer, at the time, Vice President of Google. Her job was to redesign the front page of Google. Well, I might think it's quite simple, because there are not too many elements. Um, and, but Marissa, she didn't have much knowledge about design, and she didn't even know HTML. But one thing that she did know was how to test. So she did an A-B test and asked several users, if yeah, they would prefer to see 10 or 30 results in their search, uh, in their searches. So yeah, users thought, well, 30 is better, right? Because more is better. So they opted for 30 results, and Google implemented 30 results on some of their pages. But then the shock came. What they found out was pages with 30 results had traffic to them drop an astonishing of 20%. After testing, they saw that the loading time of pages with 30 results was uh, half a second slower. And yeah, 20, per, uh, the one with, uh, 20 results was yeah, faster. So just that small amount cost such a big drop in traffic. Well, if you look at all the big companies, they pay really a lot of attention to speed. And Apple, Amazon, and so on. And it really impacts their uh, yeah, their sales. Uh, we might not make mu as much money as Amazon or Apple, but who wants to lose money? So it's important that you know, we pay attention to uh, optimizing our websites. If you ever want to do Web performance optimization. I can advise you to uh, check some case studies at uh, WPO Stats. They have all kinds of case studies how companies were able to uh, increase their traffic and sales and leads. <laughs> Two steps ahead. All right. Okay. Uh, it's a little bit in the dark down there, right? Okay, but web performance, where do we start, right, when we uh, built our website? We could go to Google, type in how to make your website faster, and, and we will end up with millions of results. Well, some of them will be good tips and advices, but when we are just starting out, yeah, it won't make much sense. 
because yeah, web performance is a journey. We need to uh, discover the things that are slowing us down. And we do that through a constant process of measuring and optimizing and monitor our website. So when you begin, uh, we start by measuring. And basically what I think in web performance, and measurement is a really important part of the overall web optimization. Well, luckily there are a lot of tools out there on the web. Uh, most of them are freely available. And you can use them to measure your website and find problems that are causing the website to slow down and set a starting point before starting to optimize your website. Here we have, for example, GP metrics, all kinds of interesting uh, metrics like total page size, another one, ping on test, and showing the number of requests are loaded onto the website. And a web page test is like an industry standard for web optimization. And you can see things like time to first byte. They're all really nice metrics to see how your website is doing. But all these tools, they only tell half of the story because yeah, they don't really tell how the user feels yeah, when they visit your website. And that's what's really important, okay? because uh, users don't measure your website with a stopwatch, and they measure it with their eyes and their brains. And you think about how it feels, how, how fast it feels. Take elevators, for example. Have you ever wondered why there are mirrors in elevators? Anybody? <laughs> well, it could be. Now, elevators, mirrors in elevators are the greatest invention. When elevators were first <coughs> introduced, they were really, really slow. And when people used them, they were standing in just four, uh, four, four uh, walls. And yeah, they were complaining how slow elevators were. Because they had not, nothing better to do. They were just standing there and waiting. So elevator companies start to come up with all kinds of solutions, how to speed up the engines, and stuff like that. And it was really expensive to do. But then one engineer came up with a, with a clever idea. He said, we are focusing on the wrong problem. We need to focus on the person inside the elevator. We, we need to focus on the user. So what they did, they installed mirrors in the elevator so to get to uh, yeah, distract the user and focus the attention on other things like putting on makeup or stuff like that. Well, they put in the, the mirrors and after a follow-up research, people said, wow, these elevators are so much faster. Well, the speed was exactly the same. So back to the web, uh, how can we keep users engaged? Well, there are several metrics that help us to measure this. One of the metrics was first on the full page. This metric shows uh, the first piece of content that is visible for a user when the site is first loaded. So you want this content to show as you want to show something <coughs> interesting as soon as possible when they visit your website. You want to keep visitors engaged. You want to look at the loading sequence while optimizing your website. Okay. Preferably you don't want to have a lot of white loading screens when your website loads. Well, note the additional metric, time to interactive, that tells you how, uh, yeah, when the website is actually ready, when it feels ready, and yeah, when your user can start to uh, interact with it. And that's what we should be optimizing for. So continuing on, now that we know what to look for, let's start to see what we can optimize and find the things that are slowing us down. Well, for this I will be using my side projects, I'm running a travel blog 
called the Miami Guide. And I'll show you how I optimized this website and outright the competition. Well, first things first, I use a Lighthouse report to measure the performance of the current uh, website at the time. Lighthouse is uh, really easy to use. It's available right in the browser, so it's very accessible and show you, shows you like, the time to interactive, first come for paint, and all, all kinds of other useful tools. Well, at the time of testing, it was uh, 6.5 seconds. Well, much too slow, uh, considering that people leave your site and it takes longer than three seconds to load. Another nice feature when you scroll down the Lighthouse report, it will also, Google will also give you opportunities on what you need to optimize. Well, in this case, Google advises to uh, use lazy, lo lazy loading for images. Lazy loading for images will be a native element in browsers, uh, already it is in Internet Explorer, but also uh, Chrome is, uh, will be implemented soon, but for now I'm using a WordPress plugin to list loads my images. Well, just by using this plugin I was able to optimize my website in 3.9 seconds. So, all right, finished. Well, not, not, very, uh, not very much because this is on desktop and we are living in a mobile only world. Now people are visiting more and more from a mobile device. So what other things I did? Well, I made sure that I had a reliable web host, uh, and all the new features, uh, HTTP2, and running the latest version of PHP. Uh, you should all be using the most modern version of PHP, uh, PHP 7. A uh, benchmark shows that it's uh, twice as fast as uh, you know, the previous versions. Uh, enabling uh, gzip compression. The gzip compression compresses your file sizes to all over 70% and yeah, that will help you to speed up your website and also save you on bandwidth. Also making sure that it's, uh, the CDN is uh, installed, configured, so that users from all over the world can access your website as fast as possible. Um, images, well, another thing that needs to be optimized, uh, optimized and I cannot, it's really the yeah, low hanging fruit that uh, you can optimize. I recently started using a browser-based app called uh, Squish, which was uh, introduced last week by Google. Well, the tool itself is really, really small. And on the first load, it's just 15 kilobytes, and it really optimizes your images by using the, the latest standards, so like JPEG, um, most JPEG, WebWP, and so on. An easier method is to uh, use a plugin like Imagify. Right? Uh, you don't have to worry at all. And, yeah, people are on your website, uh, maybe you have different editors that are uploading images. Uh, it will be automatically compressed and optimized and still uh, save the in a good quality standard uh, image. Compress and Cache everything you can on your website. I don't know if anybody who knows uh, what caching is. It basically you know, takes a snapshot of your web content and stores it in, on your server. So that it can get the information much, much quicker. <coughs> well, there are many plugins available to you know, enable caching. And the plugins is the super cache. Not the free ones, but also premium ones. Well, I'm using this one at the moment and it's working out fine. Besides compression, we should make sure that our code is unified and merged. So we 
you don't do this, all your code, if you see all the white spaces in between your code, and by minifying and merging, you combine them to, to, to a much smaller package for faster than the Power to optimize uh, helps you to, uh, yeah, makes this really easy to, uh, to, to do this. Well, I don't know about you, but uh, yeah, most of the pages you don't need all the plugins and tools that are, are shown on the web page. Uh, for example, on your home page, you might not need the code that you're using on the contact page. So we have a lot of code that's unnecessary in WordPress. You can see unused codes in uh, Google DevTools from the coverage uh, tab. And by using this plugin, I'm able to disable individual plugins on separate pages so that I'm sure that uh, I'm using only the necessary codes on that page. Well, testing again, I'm able to run much, much faster on a mobile device. And also I see that the loading sequence of the web page is uh, it's working good. So besides optimizing your codes, we want to make sure uh, that now that we are our web page is fast, that it stays fast. We need to monitor our code on our website. Well, first thing is I advise you to implement uh, Google Search Console so that you can monitor what's going on. Um, this screenshot shows you uh, an overview of your end pages that are valid. And Google will also be implementing alerts when pages are slow. Define performance budgets. <coughs> so you can set the budget, how fast your website uh, needs to be, and then it will tell you uh, how much of each script and code you can uh, develop your site. Also in Google Analytics, you have an overview of uh, page speed score, and you can have a, quick, a quicker overview of uh, all the individual pages, how they are performing. So it's also a really good tool to uh, monitor your site. And then you can start benchmark testing with your competitors. Well, if you don't know who your competitors are, there is a website called SimilarWeb. You can just enter your URL and it will show you your uh, direct competitors. And by doing that, you can see how you stack up against the competition and to see you know, what kind of, uh, how fast they are, what kind of images they, how, much, how many images they are using, and so on. And to keep uh, rank on top of the uh, updates uh, speed. So I'm using it a tool called speed. So with, with all this, I want to yeah, leave you with one final thought. Web performance on the mobile web really, really matters. And by measuring and optimizing and monitoring our websites, we can, stay f we can get fast and stay fast. So thank you for joining my talk. Um, yeah. I have uh, my slides are on my website. So thank you. you can download uh, the slides from the link uh, above, and also I have some extra guides on uh, with several tips on how to uh, speed up your website. So I believe this topic is also very broad, and I only scratched like the surface of what you can do to optimize your website. It's, yeah, basically you can. There are, like on the back end and front end, there are so many more optimizations uh, that you can make. But, uh, okay, good luck. So, does anybody have uh, some questions for me? You can raise your hand if you will be in the mic.
is that a custom theme or you bought it from somewhere? Uh, yeah, well, questions, but uh, good questions, thank you. So your questions were sir, uh, whether I did on the server side in question, uh, caching, well, there are a lot of things you can do on, uh, on, yeah, on the backend side, like Varnish and all these kind of things. And, uh, yeah, I have that uh, set up as well, so I didn't uh, go into that detail. And second question, what kind of team I'm using? Well, I'm using really a standard team. It's the Divi team, which basically a lot of people are using. But yeah, through optimization, uh, you are able to speed up uh, yeah, any website you want. So, uh, is that the answer to the question? All right, great. Any other mm -hmm. questions? Any WordPress sites? This is a this was a WordPress site. Yeah. Yeah. A specific WordPress site that is what do you mean? Do you mean whether you can recommend something specific for WordPress websites? Oh, okay. I don't know what you mean. Well, um, yeah, what is WordPress doing themselves to make WordPress performance? Is that what you uh, mean? Okay. Yeah, well, that's a good question. WordPress is, uh, yeah, the WordPress community. Yeah, it's an open source community, open code. And yeah, they are really busy now at the moment to make uh, WordPress more secure and performant. And they set up a, a separate project for that, the project Tide. You can look it in, into it on the WordPress uh, or the website. Uh, and there are a lot of uh, big companies behind it, even Google is involved. And currently they are hiring a lot of WordPress developers to work for Google to help make the platform more, much more faster and secure. So they are doing a lot in there. We have time for a couple more questions so from the chat to this one. Hi, thanks. thanks for the great talk. I was actually just want to add a little thing to the question of the previous person. I don't know who it was, but um, actually within the WordPress uh, core, we have some functions. Uh, for example, things you can add to the top of the contact. Uh, just the statements you can add, um, like uh, setting the URL. If I have a WP contact, we'll save you at a certain amount of queries. Which will also improve your readings because that's just standard in core, but it's just not implemented out of the box. So it might be interesting for you to look into the codex pages of the WP content. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So if you don't get any questions uh, right now, you can find my like, paper there. Yeah. Um, At the end party. Yay! Most <laughs> importantly, the after party, which I'm going to mention a few more times, but uh, that's I got a question. Actually, one more question. We met earlier. Yeah. Um, I said I'll ask a question. I, it basically to do with the size of um, web pages, right? <laughs> Where do you draw the line between dealing with retina and image size versus mobile? Because theoretically, right, you're supposed to, if you've got a retina screen, you need to double the size of image to get that nice crisp feel. Right. Yet that comes with a loading issue. How do you deal with that, specifically for web pages? Yeah, good question. So how to deal with images on different screens and devices. So uh, WordPress has basically something out of the box uh, the resource set images so that they uh, load different image sizes on for different devices. So by, by enabling this, uh, you can use a bigger image for rating on screens and smaller images on mobile devices. So it's basically, yeah, that's already out of the box. So, yeah, source that images. Okay, so, else? Yeah, one more question. How about Wait for the, the microphone. microphone. Okay. Yeah, uh, Hi. Thank you for your presentation. I want to ask you about how can um, this effort that Google is making to uh, force us to use it. Um, G 
teaching for the moment. Mm -hmm. It's going to work with the arm. Yeah, well, uh, okay, so Google Ads. You say, why use AMP? Because we have 5G coming out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, 5G, of course, it's coming soon, but uh, yeah, it's not for a lot of countries like uh, in the Asian countries. That will take some time. And besides, I, I like AMP because you don't have to worry about performance anymore because your, your pages are automatically fast. So that's what I like about AMP. The valid AMP page is uh, automatically loading within one second. So that's uh, a nice feature. Is that answering your question or a yeah. little bit? There are web lights. Yeah, there are lots of different protocols in this case, but yeah. yeah, I think you see that in um, countries that are don't have a Good infrastructure, they are really uh, using these kinds of uh, uh, frameworks. So, uh, yeah, we will see where it goes. But uh, the most important thing is that yeah, your website uh, is performing and that it moves within uh, three seconds. Okay, so we don't get uh, time for more than one question. And I will ask it, are you to contributor later tomorrow? I'll be catching a flight out uh, okay, in, so uh, tomorrow. tomorrow. Okay, so make sure to keep my uh, tonight at the after party. And yeah, let's